Oliver Ford Davis started acting rather late in life. He was 27 when he had his first professional role and consequently missed out on all the juvenile lead parts, always seeming to play middle-aged characters. His greatest success was in Racing Demon at the National Theatre in 1990, for which he won the Olivier Award for Best Actor in a New Play. Like most actors, he first went to the theatre as a very young child. My father was a, a, a school teacher at the uh, Latimer in Hammersmith in London, and he was very keen on the theatre and uh, directed a lot in the amateur theatre. And he, um, we, I grew up in Ealing, and he sort of introduced me to the Questers Theatre, which is a very good amateur theatre. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, he took me uh, to plays quite a lot. In fact, the first Shakespeare play I saw, very improbably, was Richard II. Which was a very, I was eight years old. It's a very strange play to take an eight-year-old to. Uh, it was a transfer from Stratford, Robert Harris, as Richard II, uh, His, Ma- His Majesty's Theatre. So those, I suppose, are my earliest memories. And in the 50s... Did you know well, the pantomime? Uh, yes. Um, yes, the Chiswick Empire, which, of course, is long gone. My father used to take me to the Carl Rosa Opera, I remember that. Um, I saw, and in the 50s, I used to go to the Old Vic and saw an, an awful lot of Shakespeare, you know, the Michael Bentall season. And... Um, I sometimes used to cycle there from Ealing. I think about it now, cycling around Hyde Park Corner, <laughs> aged, you know, 14 or something. But people did that in those days. People I mean, did I that. I did the same. I went to the cinema and theatre by myself when I was eight or nine. Yeah. Did, nobody batted an eye. No. And I've always remembered that at matinees, at the Saturday matinee at the Old Vic, the back two rows of the stalls were four and sixpence, uh, but they were half price to under 16, so that was two and threepence which is more or less 11p, um, <laughs> you could sit in the back two rows of the stalls. And you could probably also go have a dinner on that. <laughs> <laughs> and I think now, you know, the back two rows of the stalls of the Old Vic are probably at least, I don't know, £20. Pounds or at least, I think it's for £20, pounds, yeah. you'd be sitting behind a pillar, I think. Yes, yes. Um, so uh, theatre was in real terms cheaper, I think, in those yeah, days. Yeah, I think it was. It was. Particularly the, the, the cheap seats. Uh, and I was telling somebody the other day, actually, that if you went up in the upper circle of the um, Old Vic, the programmes, which were sixpence downstairs, were threepence in the in the upper circle. They were the same programme. I seem to remember that a, a mid-price or even best-price seat was about three and six in rep in the early yes. 60s, and that was the price of a set lunch. Yes, yes, yes. In most places, and a set lunch now is going to be... I, I suppose you could do it for nine or ten quid. Yes, yes. So, yeah, that's doubled in price. Yeah, it has. Mm. It has. So at what point did you decide you wanted to do? Theater? Well, I, I, I think when I was 11 at school, um, I did a scene from Richard of Bordeaux, you know, that mm. uh, Gilgood, uh, and uh, uh, I, I played Richard, and I think that was really the moment where I thought, gosh, I I want to do this. And I think I'm one of those actors who enjoyed being somebody else. I think I recognised the the power and delight of actually being somebody else. So I was a bit hooked on on that. And then I went away to school at Canterbury, King's Canterbury, and Clifford Williams was running the rep, the Marlowe Theatre Canterbury Mm. in those days. And when I was 15... I played Mercutio in the school play, and apparently Clifford came to see it, and one of the teachers, who I much admired, the next day said to me, are you thinking of becoming an actor? And I blushed and said, oh, no, no. And he said, well, Cl- Clifford came and uh, uh, to see it, and I was standing next to him, and he said, he's an actor. Um, and that, I think, was the first time a professional had ever said anything, you know. But, and that made me think, the, the, the corollary to this is about 25 years later, I'm at the Aldwych with the RSC, and we're doing a Solzhenitsyn play, The Love Girl and the Innocent. Oh, directed, I saw that, with a real train track on Exactly, stage. Ralph Coltai train track, uh, directed by um, Clifford. And I saved up this moment to say, Clifford, you know, uh, this, this, I was 15 years old, and you said I was an actor and all that kind of thing, and Clifford said... Um, I've 
absolutely no memory of your performance, <laughs> and I'm very sorry if I'm responsible for you becoming an actor. <laughs> <laughs> but what had, had any career been planned for you? I mean, how, how, I were think you thinking I, along those lines? Yeah, I thought I was going to be a teacher like my father. Obviously, I was very influenced by my father in that way. And I, I had a great facility for passing exams. And I was very interested in history. For some early age, I got hooked on history. So uh, I went to Oxford and I did history. And then I was thinking of going to drama school, along with another a few other people, possibly Lambda. And then, rather to my surprise, I got a state studentship to do a doctorate. Four hundred and fifty pounds a week uh, a year. <laughs> a <good> week. <laughs> Four hundred and fifty uh, nine pounds a week, um, and so I thought, oh, I better do that. So I did that, and uh, at the end of it, people said to me, "You, you, it, it'd be great if you ever wanted to get back to it." Because I was still thinking of becoming an actor. It'd be very good to have had a bit of teaching experience behind you. So I put in for some jobs, and the second job I put in for which was at Edinburgh University, I got, to my surprise. What year was that? That was 1964. I became an assistant lecturer, as they were then called. I was in Edinburgh in 64 at the Traverse. At, oh, oh, well, I, um, by that time, I had spent two years being the Guardian critic for Oxford. All oh, right. And I then became the Guardian critic for Edinburgh, along with Cordelia Oliver, Remember, oh, yeah. and I used to do the Traverse, and she used to do the Lyceum. So I remember the Traverse well at that time. Max Stafford Clark was stage manager, um, and I That's remember after my time. Uh, I remember that the first time I saw John Thor on the stage. They did Margaret Duroir's La Musica, and John was in that. And John always looked older than he was. Because I worked with him in Dundee. Oh, all right. And he, I worked out afterwards, he could, must have been about yeah. 24, but exactly. he looked 35. Exactly, exactly. Yes. Um, and but continued to look 35 even when, when he was 55. Yeah, yes, that's right, that's right. Um, anyway, um, I, I, I had what I usually call my Damascene moment three weeks after starting this job, which is a wonderful job, wonderful city, wonderful university, wonderful history department. I thought, actually, this isn't what I want to do with my life. And uh, I talked to, I had a very friendly professor called Dennis Hay. And Dennis said to me, listen, if I were you, I'd go now. Because if you, once you get a mortgage and perhaps a family, you won't go. Um, so I, after two years, I left. So how, how old are you then? Uh, I, when I, I left, I would have been just 27. And I, at Oxford... I, Oxford then had a tradition of bringing back uh, usually Oxford people who uh, 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 had become professionals. So I, my first year I was played a citizen in Coriolanus with Anthony Page. And Peter Dews, who had directed An Age of Kings on the mm -hmm. television and Spread yeah. of the Eagle, he had just taken over the Birmingham Rep. He took over the Birmingham Rep mm. in 66, I think. And I wrote to him, and to my surprise, he offered me a job um, at £10, 10 shillings a week, which was the equity minimum then, uh, I think. And in 67, more or less January the 1st, I started at the Birmingham Rep. And I started the same night as Timothy Dalton, who had just left RADA as a sort of white hope. Um, so we were all in our 20s. I was practically the oldest person there. What, what I suffered from when I started off was playing older than I was. I was constantly cast as middle-aged people. So at the, at the uh, Birmingham Royal Play, I was playing parts like Capulet, you know. And I think if I'd gone to drama school, they might have, you know, demanded that I played my own age. And looking back, I think that's one of the things I'm sort of sorry about, that I didn't play my own age. Peter Dews, who was this very forthright Bradford guy, said to me when I, you know, at the start, when I was 27, he said, you'll be all right when you're 40, and even better when you're 50. And that which is not what you want to hear when you're 27. <laughs> uh, but he was right almost to the month, 
I mean, so by the time I was 40, I was playing sort of banished Duke at the RSC. And by the time I was 50, I played a lead at the National. So I, I grew into my middle-aged do, do, do face you, and persona. Do you, do you regret not having your chance at Hamlet or something like that? Yes, yes. Uh, there were a number of parts. I might not have aspired to play Hamlet, but I'd lo various parts I'd love to have played, particularly in Chekhov, parts like Andre and Three Sisters or even Tuzenbach. Um, and I'd love to have played... Oh, I always wanted to play Tesman, who actually is usually played much older, though Tesman is actually only 31. What did you consider your big break? I mean, at what point did you feel you'd made the... The breakthrough, the transition to, to playing good parts. Well, I I suppose the RSC took me up. I actually got into the RSC through um, Buzz Goodbody, uh, who saw me at the Cambridge Theatre Company, and um, I think a lot of people, as you know, pass through the RSC and they do one season and they think, oh, I've done very well. They seem to like me, and then they don't get, mm. you know. But I did. No, they... they um, so what, what, was, what year was this you went there? I went there in 75, and my first production was the Alan Howard, Henry V, in which I played Montjoy and anybody French with a message, um, as Terry Hans put it. <laughs> uh, so that was quite a good part and quite a good start. Did you feel that was a breakthrough moment? Yes. Yeah, I think I did. Um, and uh, then they asked me back the next season and so I played the Banished Duke and I played one of the two tribunes in Alan's Coriolanus. So I think that was uh, that was it. So after the RSC you went off to the National didn't you which led to one of your your biggest successes I suppose. David Hare liked to try out is, and still does, I think, his plays some six months before, I have a reading of them. So we had a reading of Racing Demon, and they asked me to play um, what, I, I, what David calls the spine of the play, um, this, this guy, Lionel Espy. And I, I did this reading. I knew it was a part that was right for me, but I thought, they won't give it to me. It'll be Paul Eddington, Derek Jacobi, Nigel Hawthorne sort of part. And to the great credit of uh, Richard Eyre and David Hare, two weeks after the reading, they rang me up and said, would you like to play it? So this was another example of, for once, they thought, we'll put our money on a virtual unknown. And um, so I, I, uh, I did do, and the play was a big success, and I won an Olivier Award, and uh, to everybody's surprise, including mine. And so that was my major breakthrough at the age of 50. And you did Lear it, The Young Maida, didn't you? Yes. A bit later. Um, well, then, uh, out of the blue, because I'd never met him, Jonathan Kent uh, cast me in Ivanov, which Rafe Fiennes did, mm -hmm. with um, Harriet Walter and Bill Patterson. It was a very good cast. And uh, he cast me as Shabielski, uh, which is a very good part. So that was one of these things that came out of the blue, really. And then the next year I did uh, Naked there with um, Juliette Binoche. And then he asked me to, uh, if I'd like to do Lear uh, in about three years' time. And I, I said, <laughs> and um, I, I, you know, I didn't think it might, it might not happen. But then in 2000, uh, Rafe did a Coriolanus and um, uh, Richard II at the Gainsborough studio. Do you oh, remember that? Right. Yeah, it's a strange yeah, yeah, thing. And I played a Menenius and the Duke of York in that. And then in O uh, two, I did Lear. And that was really the end of Jonathan and Ian's time at the Almeida. So, so the Almeida was, a, was a, a, a major boost for me because I, I'd never thought anybody would offer me Lear. Gloucester, yes, but not Lear. <laughs>